Okay. Hello, everybody. Will Faber here, and I'm with Darcy Brancini, joining us for a lesson today. How are we today? We're doing good. We're good. Um, I think it's been a, a good week. Um, I've been doing exactly what you kind of suggested, and it's been working really well. I have to say, though, when I'm writing on my own, I have been sort of using the side reins as a crutch, just because I think it okay. helps me. Um, it, but I'm happy to try good. with or without either yeah. way. And, um, and that's what you want to do is try both ways. And then, yeah. it's that, you know, once again, it's that we're at this point where it is, it's, it's a difficult moment for both of you because he hasn't, you know, he's not completely confirmed in what you are trying and nor there, yeah. and you have never done this before. So the two of you are trying, trying to get the two of you to meet in the middle, so to speak, is, yeah. is what we're trying to get to do. And that's a difficult stage for everybody. So. There's nothing wrong with going back, you know, to using what she's talking about is putting the side reins on and riding with them in a long position that allows the horse to stretch into the contact. So the rider can work on their balance and contact without losing the horse so much, which of course is counterproductive to his training because we want him to know that he has to stay yeah. steady, you know. So while you're learning to do that. So anyway, that's why we approach it that way. So good. Well, let's just pick up right there we are. We can go ahead and start with the lunging then if you've... Uh, Okay. Uh, just go ahead and pick it up from there so that we don't have to spend a lot of time on the work at hand. I know you know how to do that at this point. So let's go ahead and lunge so we can get you up there. Now, of course, just because I leave this, the work in hand out sometimes in the lessons doesn't mean you should when you're there on your own. Yeah. Always a good idea just to get, once again, it's, it's good teaching for you. I've been doing it regularly with him. Yeah, um, yeah. It's actually gone really well this week. He's been really stretching right in, actually. So. You know, it's interesting just looking at how he stands these days. You know, I just, I'm noticing today for the first time his neck is starting to be longer when he just stands there like oh, that. Interesting. So that tells me the top line story because he's not standing there with that, you know, with his neck pulled back the way we normally see him standing there with the bottom of his neck sticking out. So he's starting to stand in a posture more over his back, you know, and that's, that's what they should do because we're retraining how they, how they move, you know, so they will stand differently. Huh. You know, I was looking at this because I know you said at one point, yeah. like, um, you know, horses that are, I forgot exactly what you were talking about, but you were saying this should disappear more. Exactly um, right. So they develop the underside of the neck when they pull themselves with their shoulders. So yeah. when they drag them, stab and pull themselves along, that's why they become u neck. You know, yeah. I mean, yes, maybe some horses are born a little bit that way, but it's really how they become from not ever using their back end. Yeah. And of course, you, you know, you can take the most unique horse in the world that people say was born that way. And if you work them correctly, it will disappear, you know, okay. and uh, as you see, this is already happening with this horse. So as I said, you can always see how he's standing there with his neck more further out. He's beginning to engage his top line just standing. So that's really good because he'll be more comfortable when he's standing. Okay. So that's a good process. And I said, what you'll, you'll begin to see that, that thick other side of that neck will just get less and less and less, and the top part will get thicker and thicker. Okay. It just seems like he still has quite a bit there, but I think... Oh, you know, yes. He also, I think when I watch him in the field, like, he does tend to carry himself still, like, kind of high with his head all high if he, if he does decide to be energetic, you know? Yeah. Well, I said that's the... Just notice him standing there today is the first day I've see, seen him stand like that, where he's let his neck stretch out in front of him more. So that tells me things are changing to some degree. Good. But it's a process that takes a few years, especially with one like this. Okay, Calvin. Are you going to pee or poop or something? Nope. Okay, come on, let's wake up. <laughs> yeah, the come on. poop is going to go, they're not going to go. Walk. Come on. Maybe he is going to go. Yeah, he yeah. is. <laughs> he, he looked is at bored. the camera Sorry. as if to say, like, <laughs> We approve. You may walk on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Good boy. Welcome. That's a boy. Just in general, this walk is getting much better, starting off with a nice swing already to it. Uh, 
Very nice. And so when we're looking at them here also, we always want to think about, well, what would I like the horse to be doing when I'm on its back? Well, what it's doing right now is pretty much what you would like it to be doing. Stepping nice, nice rhythmic four beat walk, stretching into the contact. So add a rider to that picture and it's a very nice picture of a good working walk. He's picking up his feet and stepping forward. Remember how when we first started this horse, like getting those back legs to step, right? You know, it was even difficult. And that's really very nice. Good job right there, very nice. Very nice walk there. As you come around to the center line there, you can ask him to trot. Ready? And trot. And trot. Good boy. Yes. Very nice. Not a lot of reluctance today. That's good. Come on. Chop. This is coming around so much better and so much easier. Yes. That's really nice. And as you come around to the wall, ask him to canter. Ready? Canter. Come on. Canter. And back to a trot. And trot. Look what a trim waistline he has these days. <laughs> Very nice. As you come back to the wall again on the other side, ask him to canter. 
Ready? Really looking nice there. Canter. Good boy. Very good. Very good. Something back to trot. And trot. That's coming so much better. Neck is beginning to relax out in front of him. And keep that going. Once again, when you come back to trot, that's going to yield the hindquarters just a little bit, get a little more swing. That's coming very nicely now. Keep that going. Very good. Very nicely done. As you come to the center line, ask him to walk and halt and change directions. It's really good. Good boy. Whoa. Really good today of getting started. See how he is in the new direction, but for him, that was very good. Very little resistance to movement. Yeah. Starting to look like he has a little bit of his own motor now. Yeah, exactly. He comes out and he seems to know we're going to work. You know? Yeah. Instead of we're going to resist working. <laughs> yeah. Like anything else, it's just, it has to become habit for them. This is yeah. what their life is, they, you know. And if it's pleasant enough, you know, if we don't make it uncomfortable for them, they begin to enjoy it. Come on. Come on, Calvin. Walk. Walk on. Okay. Keep trying to yield his hindquarters a little bit there in the walk. Get him to push him out there a little bit, see if we can get a little more engagement off the inside hind leg. Come on. Over. Over. Good boy. It's getting better. I'm going to go ahead and trot now. Wrong cue. <laughs> and trot. Uh, We're not doing walk to canter transitions yet. Uh, Come on. Yep. Come on. Trying to yield the sign quarters a little bit more in this direction. That's getting better. So that's getting better now. There we go. Go ahead and ask him to canter as you come to the wall over here. Ready? Activate him a little bit. Canter. Come on. Canter. Come on. Come on. Canter. Back to a trot. And trot. Banner is certainly improving. At least he's letting the neck come out in front of him a little bit. 
So he's helped us trot a little bit. Come on. Yeah. Trot. Good boy. Yes. That's it. That's more like it. A little bit more. And ask him to canter again. Ready? Canter. Canter. Okay, trot. <laughs> canter. Come on. Canter. Now trot again. And trot. I think there was more resistance this week for some reason. Uh, in that direction, kind of funny. You never know. Looking good now, though. He's starting to swing. Now uh, we're getting there. Come on. There we go. Keep that. Good boy. There we go. Really nice now. There you go, good. Trot. Just one more time around your circle as you come back to the center line, you can bring them back to a walk and halt. And walk. Whoa. Oh. Boy. Yeah, it's interesting how every day is a little different because yesterday he was reluctant to pick up the canner going left on the lunge line, but on the right, he looked beautiful. He was stretching right into it. So uh, uh, that's what makes this interesting. It's always yeah. a little never and and rarely is it exactly what you're thinking. That's why I, I, know, I, right? I, I mean, I know people kind of think about, well, I, I want to make a plan of what I'm going to do. Say it's good to have a, come out with a plan, but you always have to have your plans always have to be a little malleable with horses that you just you never know what you're going to encounter. Yeah, it's so true. That's why we have to keep thinking, keep our thinking caps on while we do this. Yeah. It's not just a rote thing. It's not just do this and this is going to happen. It doesn't work that way. Yeah. Good, and you can go ahead and take the side reins off and we'll try again without them today and see how you do without them. Okay. You know, I think that's one of this whole idea that horses are kind of static is kind of this wrong way of thinking. You know, I see people get very upset when they're not, they, it's just the way they're going to be. You know, they're never going to be, uh, you know, you go to a horse show and, you know, for instance, that's a, something where you're going to, you know, at home, you don't ride the horse that many hours a day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so people go to horse shows, they're all mysterious so, oh the horse suddenly isn't going the way it's going at home well at home you ride for an hour and you're done right yeah. the horse show you're getting on and off and all these other things and you know, the horse is not used to that true so the, all those things kind of have to always have to be thought about you know relative to how, what the horse's experience is being in these things and how they're why they're reacting one way or another but then may simply you know some days we get fantastic work out of horses and we're all ready to do the same thing again we come out the next day and well they're tired <laughs> you know yeah, exactly. they gave you the big effort the day before and then we're like oh well i can't quite get it today so we always have to be ready to, to change our plans and ride ride the horse we have today is what i would like to say not the one we hope we have or the one we hope to have one day yeah that makes so much sense actually yep and i think it's and as i said if it were always the same it would be pretty boring i would think you know yeah. but 
And you're That's right why we always that. have to be, you know, it should be a relaxing thing for people experiencing writing in the sense that, you know, if you're coming to this with other things on your mind, you better not be because a horse will quickly trip you up. <laughs> you know? So we have to put everything else out of the way when we're working horses and concentrate on what their needs are, even if it's only for that hour a day. Yeah. I always used to say this sort of forced mindfulness because you can't really be thinking about something else. No. Not and get anywhere with yeah. this. They require all of our attention while we're on them. They definitely managed to teach us a lot, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and also understand that whatever they do is never personal. Yeah. Now, however, I say that, but on the other hand, if the horses learn to hate you because of what that 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 is personal, <laughs> yeah. you know, so sometimes it is, you know, but it shouldn't be. Let's put it that way. You know, if it's if it is personal, there's something wrong with the way you're going about the whole thing. True. But uh, you know, you can't blame a horse for being pissed off at somebody that's whipping and spurring them and trying to force them into a phony frame and the rest of it. Yep. And I, I'm always amazed when I see people doing that who attribute bad attitude on the part of the horse. <laughs> you know, yeah. It's the rider who has the bad attitude. But it's amazing how many trainers are out there sort of teaching a similar thing. Like I can well, that's remember what being do. in classes who are really like, hit him harder, he's being a jerk that's right what, now. And you're like- That's just yeah. old bad school training. You know, yeah. the, old, uh, the old mule skinner, you gotta hit him in the head and get their attention, right? Yeah. <laughs> Kind of idea, you know. You gotta. They have to be made to do whatever they're doing. It always felt wrong to me, but you sit there and think, uh, "Well, this person knows what they're talking about, supposedly." You know. <laughs> supposedly, exactly, because because they have a sign up that says they're riding it. Yeah. You know, that being the big problem here is that there is no. <laughs> yeah. Who decides who's a riding instructor? Nobody. Who ever decides to put up a sign? You know, and these. Uh, these organizations that do this, like the USDF, are a joke. I mean, because what they're teaching is the same upside down stuff we're seeing in the show ring. So, yeah, can't expect much there. Okay. Can you please stop putting everything in your mouth? You're being Duke. Duke puts everything in his mouth. <laughs> Okay, Calvin, let's be good today. Can we stop though not, and let me get on? Whoa. Uh -huh. Oh, thank you. He's ready to go. Okay, now we walk. Okay. So he's taking that first moment, first time I get on a horse on the back and immediately trying to find your center, stretch yourself up. I always check my seat bones. How do my seat bones feel? Do I feel locked into the saddle in a good place? Are my legs hanging underneath me? Am I lifting my toes up? Am I lifting my chest, flattening my shoulder blades into my back and stretching up and then loosening my hips so that my hips can follow? Remember that little exercise we've been uh, trying to do a little work on that wall exercise I showed you? We, while I was there, we had a little exercise on how to sit to the trot, getting that loosening of the lower back. Yeah. So have you kept up with that exercise? Oh, I have been a little bit. Maybe yeah, not as religiously as I should. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's already off to a nice start here in the walk. Pretty good rhythm there. Yeah. Right. Let's keep this tempo as you go large in the walk. Just trying to maintain that tick tock one, two, three, four. It's like a metronome, if possible. And always remembering that the rhythm is what tells us how effective we are being as a rider. Every time the horse loses rhythm, we know that something went wrong. The horse lost its back or we lost the energy. We didn't keep it going. So that's always our goal. Keep everything running. Keep the engine running at the same tempo. So when you feel the horse slow down, we know we're losing the gymnastic quality of whatever exercise we're doing. So. Just getting that idea, getting that step, whatever gate we're in, must be like a metronome. 
Let's go up here when you get by the center line. We'll turn by the center line and leg you to the left. Of course, when I say by the center line, means whatever is a comfortable turn for the horse that you're riding. At this point, I wouldn't necessarily expect them to be able to make a half 10 meter circle. Well, that was pretty good. That's about right for him. So we overshot the center line a little bit, but it would have been very hard for him to make that turn directly on the center line in his level of training. And that's one thing we always have to be careful of in dressage rings, that we don't start forcing horses into these movements. A dressage ring is actually a very small space for most horses of today. Remember when, when these things were first came about, you know, we generally rode much smaller horses. And, and once again, for training, people didn't necessarily train in a dressage ring all the time. There are a lot of horses that simply, you know, this would be now, I don't think your horses are that way, but there are horses that would be too big even to make a circle in a ring of this size when they're young i'm talking about as they develop then of course they're able to now let's let him stretch all the way down and lengthen the walk and let me see if we can get that stretch all the way down now see if that will come for us go ahead and make a circle here go ahead and take him on a circle for the stretch here just to help you get that stretch all the way down though it's coming nicely that's getting there a little bit deeper, see if we can get it to go deeper. Yield his hindquarters a little bit more. That's it, a little more. Good, keep working that. And of course, taking contact, softening his mouth a little bit. And of course, when I say to soften his mouth, what I generally mean is that one rein is steady and the other rein is giving and taking a little bit, depending on where we feel the most resistance. It's usually the inside rein, but not always. So we have to just feel, where does it feel tense? You know, that would be the position. In other words, if you, your right frame feels soft, well, good. If the left frame feels hard, then you'd want to give and take that rein a little bit. It is when you touch it, the contact doesn't feel supple, like, it's, like you can follow it. Better like to see that get a little bit deeper. See if you can yield the hindquarters a little bit more on the circle there and see if we can get a little more stretch, a little deeper stretch into it. There you go. Keep working that. You're starting to get him to yield the hindquarters. Keep that going like that. There you go. Keep working that and softening him a little bit with that inside rein while you do that. See if you can get him to take it down a little deeper. There you go, like that. That's what I'm talking about. Very nice. Good. Much more like it there. Did you feel that connection come across his back? Feel the step yeah. got bigger all of a sudden? So you made that happen by softening his jaw and pole and getting to relax the jaw and pole as he lifted his back. Very nice. Very nice. Like that. Good. Now go ahead and begin to shorten your reins and bring him more up into a working position. But see if you can maintain that feeling of him swinging over his back as you do and as you go large. Now down the next long side, we're going to do a shoulder four. So both hands are going to move to the right. So now we're asking to listen a little more to that outside rein and allow you to position his shoulders with the reins. Both hands come a little bit to the right. As you go into your corner, just keep coming around like you're going to start a circle. When you reach that point as the shoulders just step off the rail a little bit, then your inside leg sends the horse down the rail, keeping that same position. Just like that. There you go, right there. Very nice. Keep softening it. So you, every lateral movement is an opportunity to get the horses back up underneath you. That's what it's for. And to try to soften the horse a little more at the jaw and pull, like you're doing right there. So you begin to get him to yield a little bit more, and we begin to get a working walk like that. But always remember that the lateral movement has a, has a reason that we do it, not that we just want to go sideways on a horse. We do it to engage the inside hind leg in whichever direction that we're going so that we can get a little more lift out of the back. Now, that was going really well. Then he just kind of got to right there and he kind of flattened. So on the circle here, I want you to bring, bring your reins up, bring him up a little bit, but you need to perk him up a little bit. So everything kind of died for a minute. So let's come back on the circle and see if we can get him to come up a little bit, get back into that rhythm that we had a minute ago. It had a little more, little more tempo to it. You may have to give him a little tap with your whip. If he's starting to get a little sleepy, you may have to remind him. Like if you start having to tap, tap, tap with your leg and nothing happens, then you know you need to give him a little reminder with your whip. Hey, you know, wake up a little bit. 
That's getting better. Keep that coming. Keep coming up. Just keep shortening your range a little bit and ask him to soften. Let's see if we can get him to soften the John Pole hit a little bit on the circle. But you got to generate a little more energy out of him. Right now, he needs to generate a little more energy. So think of stretching up, tapping him with your whip, putting the hind quarters to the outside on the circle again. A little bit more. Don't be afraid to tap him with your whip. Move the hind quarters to the outside a little bit. Can you take a little more? And that's very normal. He's, oh, well, I don't want you to tap me that much. There you go. But he gave it it. Yeah, very nice. Now that started to happen there. Did you feel him start to lift up underneath you a little bit? That's yeah. what you want to maintain. Now let him stretch all the way back down and lengthen the walk as you go large down the long side. And use your legs alternately. Really try to get him to stretch out and really open the walk up. See how big you can make it and then change the rain across the next diagonal. I like that. Good job. <clears throat> All right, that. good job. Really nice stretch there. Good, keep that big walk coming. Very nice. Very nice. Keep that going like that. Now on to the circle here, and now I want you to begin to shorten the reins and bring him up more into a working walk and see where we get to. Staying on the circle for a moment. So as you begin to take the reins, you can see how he kind of flattened on you a little bit in the stretch there. So now we're going to stretch up, begin to tap with your leg, begin to ask for a little more energy. If you have to tap with your whip, do so. Begin to put him a little more shoulder four on your circle. And try to just feel like you're generating more energy in the horse, that you maintain that sort of energy that you can feel in the body of the horse. And, of course, that's a little difficult with one like this because kind of, these kinds of horses tend to be a little sleepy and lazy. They're better lazy than crazy, but you have to work them a, a little. Just You have to be on it a little more. You've come a long way, though, on that. Go ahead and go large now in the walk. Continue trying to make it a little more active as you go here, kind of slowing as it's starting down the long side. And then we're going to turn by the center line again and do a leg yield to the right. Continue just trying to generate that, that little sense of energy bubbling up into you, that you can feel it, that sense of if I just put my legs on, the horse would be ready to move into a trot. So we want our walk to always feel like it contains the next gate up, at least. So that is the, that it contains the trot, that just a little motion of our legs would send the horse up into the trot, that he almost has enough energy, as I was saying, you know, to ask for the trot. And I feel like that's always there in the potential. And do your leg yield. Good. Ask him to soften in that leg yield. Coming up a little bit. Good there. Keep that going. Get a little more step. Good. There you go. Over. I was trying to flatten on you a bit, but you did a good job of, of energizing him there. Now back on your circle. Now keep him up a little bit. Now be sure that you start thinking about when the stretches are coming. Don't let him just decide to pull the reins out of your hand. So at this point, and you have to start consciously making an effort to decide what the frame is going to be. You know, up to now, you've been kind of riding and, you know, we've kind of set the horse up and, you know, we let him be in a frame for a while. But now you have to start thinking about that all the time because you're taking control of the frame of the horse as a rider. So you've got to start thinking about that and not letting him initiate what's going to happen. You know, we, he has to wait for you to initiate the stretch. We've maintained that walk and go large. That's looking much better now. So be conscious that, you know, you come out that you don't just let your hands. It's easy to just, we want to ride with light hands, but we want our thumb to, and to be down against the rein, against our index finger. The rest of our hands should be soft and round. It should always feel like you have a little ball in the middle of your hand, like in the palm of your hand, so to speak. So your hand is like a little ball. But your thumb is down and holding the rein. You know, and so that you know that you're not letting the horse uh, stretch the reins out of your hands whenever it feels like it. Now, again, shoulder in down the next long side, shoulder four, a little bit of shoulder four down the next long side, trying to maintain and actually trying to build energy. So while you're in the lateral work, try to build the energy. So feel like it has more energy. 
So the lateral work will help you get him to contain it like that. Little taps of your leg with that, there, like that. So he starts to step up and contain that energy, like that. Not bad at all. That's it, straighten the neck. There you go, like that. And you see how his shoulder fell back and did a good job of correcting that. Little tap of your whip might be good there. I've seen too many, too many taps of your leg without anything happening there. So remember, one, two, three, the whip is there. So don't just touch, touch, and grind your heel into the side of them because that's what makes them go to sleep. Now on the circle here again, little tap of your whip again, trying to get it bring up. Now I want you to create, think of this, you are going to create the trot in the walk. So I want you to try to build enough energy that when you put your legs on, he's ready to spring forward in the trot. So you feel like it's there. So start to ask for more. Just don't let it go anywhere for a moment. And how do we not let it go anywhere? By just giving and taking a little bit. It's like you're doing it. Keep trying to build a little more energy in it. At the same time, keep widening a little bit of shoulder forward there like that. Keep him up. Keep pull up. Tap again. He's starting to sort of flatten a little bit on you. So you have to be ready to react every time he changes. Like that, keep that going, a little tap, maintaining that energy in the horse. Prepare to trot, and now trot rising. There we go, good. Now stay on your circle here, but I want you to increase the tempo of the trot so it starts to swing, and let's go ahead and give him a stretch now. We start this trot out, let's let him stretch all the way down, just work on getting him active. And once again, you can work on that holding your inside hand, can come into the inside like an open leading rein. It's perfectly fine when you're working at this level. Good, that trot's looking better. So we always have to have enough energy. Before we can start trying to adjust the frame, there has to be enough energy coming through the horse to be able to do that. That's starting to look better now. Now go large and trot. 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 Turn after the center line and do a leg heel to the right. Step over and back on the circle again. Trap. Trap. He's trying to take a dump there, I think. Okay. He'll be much better after this. Yep, always is. Okay. Trap. Good. <laughs> Now, try to make him a little more shoulder forward. So push the hind quarters to the outside of your circle a little bit to engage that inside hind leg a little. Even a little more. Let your, let your hands come a little more to the inside so your outside hand can help you keep the neck in a little bit. Of course, don't let it become rigid when you do that, but that's okay to do. Bring him over. Keep trying to bring it in a little bit with the shoulders coming to the left while you push the hind quarters to the right, to the outside. There you go. There you go. That's getting better. Beginning to coordinate it. Keep that going like that in the circle. Yeah, that's more like it. Now just ask him to soften the jaw and pull. There you go, right there. It's not bad at all, right there. See him come out of it. Now soften him again. So if he starts to come out of it, right away you have to engage that high quarters again. Like that. Now go ahead and go large this time. Getting better. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Good. <laughs> there. Go ahead and let him have a stretch now, but open it up. Now really let him stretch and really open that trot up now in the stretch. Now he's finally going to really get a deep stretch. And again here, opening up down the long side. That's getting better now in the circle again. Let's ask him to soften and let's get him back into the stretch again for a moment. There we go. Now we're getting there like that. Turn a little deeper again. Keep working that. He's distracted because horses are walking right. in the barn. Right. It's a little challenge for you. There you go. Like that. Getting back and uh, his attention back on you again. Good. That's the way. Good. 
Good, good. Like that. Good. Keep that. There. Good. Notice how much better his hocks move once he gets in that deep stretch like that. Really good. Good. Now begin to just shorten your reins and just bring him up a little bit and let him stabilize, but try to keep that level of activity that you have now. Like that. Good. Now keep that activity. Now just put him a little bit shoulder four. Ask him to soften. So you're looking for him to soften the jaw and pull a little bit like that. Good. Not bad. Now go ahead and go large again. Maintain that. See if you can keep him right there. Change the rein across the next diagonal. <clears throat> Come on. Try on. Trot. Okay. Trot. Remember to correct your rising diagonal. Oh. <laughs> that might right. help. Big deal. And then go ahead and stretch again here. Let's get him all the way down. Keep that activity. I'm loving the activity here. Good. Keep that all the way down there. Keep it. Maintain that. Really good. Now. There. Really good. Keep that. Excellent. Come on. Trot. Keep that. Good. Now, back on a circle here, and let's see if we can get him to soften the jaw and pull a little bit and find a little more of our working trot. We've got good activity here. Now, all he needs to do is begin to engage that hind leg, get him to soften the jaw and pull just a little bit more, and you would be there. Ask for a little more with your inside rein. Get him to take your, there you go, like that. Feel him soften just then. That was good. Keep that. Like that. Every time he comes out of it, you can take again. Like that. Keep it right there. Now shorten your reins a little bit more. We're going to stabilize him a little, see if we can get a little bit more out of it. A little tap of your whip if he starts to stall. And when you, when you do that, just let your hand relax for a second, but don't throw it away. That's coming nicely. Now ask him a little more with the inside rein. Once again, soften a little more with the inside rein. Now a little bit with the outside rein. It looks like he started to hang on that a little bit there. Good. Now try to move the hind quarters a little bit more outside the circle. Soften him a little bit with your inside rein again. There. That's coming nicely there. That's getting there. That's getting there. Good. Now stretch him all the way down again. Keeping that. Really good. Keep it. All the way down there now. Doing great. Good boy. Like that. All the way into that deep stretch. Fantastic. Like that. Keep that. You can get that. Ultimately, you can get everything else. Very nice. Keeping that. Really good. Really good. Really good. Really good. Maintain that. Really good. Sending your hips through in the rising trot. Really good. Now bring him up from that again. Try not to change anything else. The only thing that's changing is going to be the position of his head and neck, hopefully. And once again, as you start to bring him up, start to soften him a little bit with that inside rein, asking to move a little bit outside with the hindquarters. There, starting to get a good working trot. There, it's good. Keep it. Keep it. Keep that right there. Don't change a thing. Keep it. Very nice. Now go large. Maintain that. Now try not to let him flatten after you go straight so he doesn't just flatten and fall on his forehand. Keep him active there as you go straighten out because you don't have that inside hind leg to work with. There you go. Good. Now that was good correction. Turn after the center line and leg yield to the left. Really good. Like that. Yes. Good right there. Very nice. Very nice. Now right away, circle. Look to the right and circle. Keep him up there. A little tap. little tap of your leg and whip there to keep him as you start to circle. It's going to be a little more effort for him. Bring the pole up a little bit. So we're going to bring him up a little bit in the working trot now. Stabilize him. Ask him to soften the jaw to the inside again. Ask him to keep him taking. There you go. Like that. He did it. Keep that. Keep that. Keep it there. Keep it there. Really nicely done. Maintain that right there. Excellent, excellent. Go large. Keep that. Remember, once again, as you go straight, don't let him flatten out. Ready to stretch your body up. Don't let him just fall onto the forehand as you go straight. And change the rein across the next diagonal again. Really good right there. Maintain that. Now, as you make your turn, 
Now your shoulders straighten. So the horse goes straight. Now we have a new inside rein. We start to soften him a little bit with the left rein instead of the inside, beginning to move him off of your left rein, left leg now as you come to the corner here. Right away onto a circle and immediately trying to push the hind course to the outside, ask him to soften, kind of lost a little energy and kind of flatten a little bit. Back on the circle again, stretching up, correct your rising diagonal. Now make him a little more shoulder forward, tap with your whip on the inside, kind of losing energy a little bit, and then ask him to soften to your left rein a little bit. Like that, there, you did it, good, keep that. Now stretch him all the way down. Really good, like that, like that, maintain that. Keep that going, just like that, that's fantastic, keep it. Excellent. Keep that going. Into the stretch, beautiful. Now bring him back up in the stretch. So as you start to bring him up, be sure, bring your shoulders back, lift your chest. Begin now to move him off of that inside rein and into your outside leg, uh, outside rein rather. Begin to actually to soften there with the inside rein as you ask for a little bit of flexion from the jaw and pole again now. As you bring his pole up just a little bit to find our working trough. There, really good. Keep that, keep that. Little more flexion, starting to lose it. Right away, move the hindquarters again, like that. And again, ask him to soften to your inside rein again. Like that, a little bit more. Give him a little soften with the outside and then to the inside. Like that. There you go, right there. It's good. Right there. Active. Step. Now stretch him all the way back down again. And as you do, open it up. Push your hips through a little bit so the stride opens up. Really nice. Like this. Keep that. Excellent. Wow. That's a trot. Now bring him up from that. Shortening your reins. And as you do, you start to begin to put your inside leg on, move those hindquarters over a little bit as you bring him up in the reins, bring him up a little bit more, ask him to soften to your inside rein, move the hindquarters a little, put him a little more on a shoulder in. So if you run into a little bit of resistance right there, you know you need to engage that inside hind leg a little bit there so that he can soften the jaw and pull a little more. There, like that. Keep it. Tap, tap, make it work up, 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 tap, tap, tap. David, keep it a little bit more. <laughs> there, good. Move the hindquarters again to the outside. Really nice right there. Good. You're doing it. You're doing it. Excellent. Keep it there. Soften him a little bit more. Stretch up. Stretch up. Don't let him pull you forward. There. Like that. Like that. Good job. Good job. Now stretch him all the way down again. Make it active. Like that. Now go ahead and go large and maintain that stretch as you go large. Let him stay in the stretch. Like that. All the way around. Excellent work. Like that. Very good. Keep that all the way around the arena. That's really fantastic. And once again, for those watching, watch now that he has this stretch, how much more action there is in his hocks, how much more he's able to bend his hocks. And onto your circle here, into the stretch again. This is that. One more time, deeply. Like that. Really good. Really good. Good, good, excellent. Now bring him up again. As you start to shorten your reins, little touches of your legs to keep the engine running at the same tempo. Shorten your reins a little more. Bring him on up that little bit more. Start to move his hindquarters out to the outside a little bit. Begin to soften him a little more with your inside rein. But if you feel a little resistance on the outside, a little quick softening on the outside is good too, depending on where if you feel that. There you go, like that. Being sure that we have contact on both reins. Maintain that, maintain it, maintain it right there, right there. Keep it, keep it, keep it, and walk. Very nicely done today, Darcy. That was a great ride today. Yeah, it felt Now good. notice that you know we didn't make a we didn't worry about that last annual transition because we're not at the point where we're worried about transitions. We're we're getting the horse stabilized in each individual gate, and what you will then see over time is that the the transitions will start to cure themselves, whereas we work on them, you'll end up just killing the impulsion in the horse. So once again, as the horse becomes more consistent in the gates, the transitions just become easier and easier all by themselves. But that was by far, I think, the best ride you've had on the horse to me. Yeah, it felt really good, actually. Really, really nice. He's coming up beautifully. And I think that strategy of, you know, continue to use 
you know, the side reins. Uh, but also don't forget that we also need to come back and let him stretch. I mean, have a day when you start without the side reins on and just let him stretch all the way down before you even put them on. Yeah, so we always want to be able to get back to that deep yeah. stretch. But he's coming up really nicely. Your balance is looking really good on the back of the horse. Very, very nicely done. Thank you. And he, tra you know, it's just he's so different looking for those watching. I mean, when he gets in gear and really starts to flow, he looks like a totally different horse. All that pissiness, you know, the ears and everything. And he just gets that nice, calm look on his face. And he's just going. And that's what we want, you know, that sense of energy. That's where we're at right now is just building the horse so that you can, you know, turn it on and it will keep running because <laughs> that's what we want to do right now. You know, he was one of those horses. I said, horses come in two varieties. They're either crazy or they're lazy, one or the other. There are very few of them that kind of in that in-between sort of category where they're just right. You know, they're usually kind of one or the other in the beginning. So that's what it's all about right now. But that once he got into that really swing and really got there, man, it's just then you look like you feel like you could power forever. Where in the beginning, it feels like, oh, my God, because you're going to make exactly. it around the arena you know, <laughs> without dying, you know. And some, and, but it gets, gets easier as you see all the time, like his resistance in the yeah. beginning and all that. It's just every time I see you, it's better and better and better. Yeah. And there's, you know, very little of, you know, for those of you who don't remember when we started these lessons back whenever that was before Christmas of last year or something, you know, this horse was running for the exit doors <laughs> and, and always had his eye for the outdoor yeah. on his way out. So he's come a long way in just you know, his willingness to work and his understanding of what the job is. And, you know, he's not trying to avoid it any longer. So that's really great. You know. Any questions today? I don't. Thank you very much. You are welcome. That was absolutely a fantastic ride. If anybody else has any questions about what we're doing, be sure and just put them on the site there, where, on the website, uh, wherever we have this up there, and we'll be happy to answer your questions at some point along the way. So great. Yep. All right. Well, well done. We'll take a little five-minute break here while Ron gets his horse ready, and yep. uh, I'll see you shortly. Yep. Okay. Sounds good.
And we're live. Okay, we are back once again. This is Will Faber and uh, Ron Branchini is coming up here with his horse, Duke. So what we had noticed with this horse in the past is he's a little sluggish about the work in hand. So what we're going to do is just go ahead, once again, to save a little time here and go ahead and lunge him first so we can just move on because he's a, he is a horse that is good to get activated before you do that with him. Got it scratched at you there. So we'll just go ahead and lunge him to start with. Okay, He's side reins on. We don't have to worry about any of that sort of thing. Get us to where we need to be. Side reins. So he looks perky today. Yep. Did you want side reins on, right? Yes. Okay, come on, buddy. Long so he can stretch. Start. Yeah, they're connected here on the other side. on this loop that I put. It picked up a couple flashes for the uh, side reins. Ooh. Oh, good. <laughs> Make life easier. Always good to have a few of those on hand. Yep. Uh, let's start with uh, one to start, or actually two to start. I mean, all the way down, up to it, or about long? Long. Yeah, second, second hole. We'll see how it is. Hi, Dean. What you doing, Zono? Can you grab me the lunge line? Give me your reins. Can I wait? There's nothing holding him right now. You are with the side reins. Oh. Oh, well. No, it doesn't do it. It's not connected. Oh. oh. Nope. I'm trying to keep him from moving, that's all. I'm trying to help you there. Okay. Thank you. And of course, as you're starting out there, you're kind of doing a you're doing a bit of work in hand. Just you're just doing it on a lunge line. Something I look at with this horse over the time, just training everyone else's eye. I'm always looking at that space between the saddle and the horse's hips, which is improving a lot with this horse every week. This horse had quite a bit of a dip there, though. This horse is quite well fleshed out, but he had quite a um, quite an L dip already starting there, which of course is the beginning of kissing spine. So I'm always looking for that, but we've already seen that begin to come up and fill out. You see right there when you see him when you go by, you can see, see a little bit of dip there in front of those hips, but it's improving every week now. Right, Walk on. Walk is looking a little more active at this day. A little more fluid step. You're looking for.
still looks like it's pretty warm there. I see you're still in a t-shirt. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, 65 today. Yeah. Gets down in the 40s at night. That's about what it is here. Yeah. Moment. That's right. You can let him have, go ahead and not drop once you get going there. Drop. Just make him a little more active, kind of just like Calvin, a little bit of resistance there, just getting Drop. the flow going. You can see how when they start off, it's kind of slow, fast. He's not super engaged behind. Kind of the hindquarters are kind of trailing a little bit, not really flexing his hocks much. We'll watch for that to improve as we begin to – Aim to swing a little more actively. So you keep trying to yield the hind quarters a little bit away from you on the lunge line there a little bit. So we get him to engage a little bit more. Trap. That's getting better now. Same thing again. Once again, just trying to open up the trot. Keep trying to yield the hind quarters a little bit so he starts to stretch into the contact. Drop. Of course, at this phase, as horses get trained, this gets easier and easier. But at level with this horse, where he's just had a, a month or so of work with you, you know, they're nowhere near where they're going to just come out and spring right into it. Drop. Takes a little time just to get them activated and moving. There we go, starting to look better. There we go. So notice as he stretches down, we start to see more flexion in the box. The back is able to be used more efficiently and correctly on his part. You can let the movement swing through his back. Getting better. Yeah. Trap. Come on. There we go. It's starting to look like something. Notice the hindquarters are beginning to stay under the body a little more. They're not falling out behind so much. Trot's beginning to become a little more consistent. You can watch there as he brings his head up, you see how the hocks sort of fall out behind the body. So that's what we don't want to have happen. Every time the head comes up like that, we try to yield the hindquarters again. This is getting to re-engage like that. You start to get a little more swing in it. Very good. Trap. And of course, that's why we're lunging this horse first rather than working in hand. These horses that are of a sort of sleepy variety, if you will, <laughs> and uh, getting them moving, getting them active is sometimes what we have to do. Now, with horses more like thoroughbreds and hot horses, we always want to do that work in hand first, or generally, because we want them to calm down and get into the stretch. But when we have horses that are of a quieter variety, like these last two, sometimes it's a good idea to go ahead and get them moving first, get the blood going. Trap. Again, see, so trying to yield those hindquarters a little bit more. A little bit more. There we go. Good. And that's more like it. Good. Now go ahead and canter as you come to the next wall. Remember with him, you always have to get him kind of into the into the rail a little bit, especially in this direction. So as you come around to the wall on the other side, just kind of crowd him into the wall a little bit and then ask for the canter. Can just answer. Come right there. We're just going to ask again very quickly if he doesn't pick it up. Canter. There you go. Good. And he got the correct lead this time. First time he's picked canter. that up in this direction from the first try. So that's an improvement. Keep that going. Just try to keep it going. See if he'll just let his neck stretch out in front of him a little bit. See if Canter. Going a few strides. See if that'll happen. There he goes. Starts tapping a little bit. Keep it going. 
Keep it going. Keep it going there. Good yeah, start it a little bit. Now yeah, back to a trot. So you just start right. to relax his head forward. That's what I wanted to see. So now I'm going to bring him back to a trot. <clears throat> trot. And now the trot looks much better. Trot. Much better. Trap. There we go. Keep that going. Back into that stretch again, like that. Good. And as you come to the center line, let him walk and change directions. And walk. And ho. <clears throat> so once again, with him, just like with the other one that we just saw, we're looking for him to get to that moment where he wants to just start carrying himself, that we don't have to keep urging him on every step of the way. That the flow begins to happen a bit by itself. It's the impulsion becomes self-generating, if you will, when we do all this correctly. Same thing. You see, just like with Calvin, he's a little bit reluctant at first to get moving. That's better already, though. Very nice. Trap. He wants to canter a little bit, so I let him. That's all right. Cancer. And now back to a trot. And trot. Good there, starting to seek that contact like that. Good. Trot. Much better now. Trot. Now notice how his belly has already tightened up. You want to see he's starting Trot. to bring that ab line in, so it tells us he's starting to swing through his back. Trot. Trot. Nice. And go ahead and ask him to canter one more time. Canter. Canter. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Woke him up all of a sudden. Good. Now bring him back to a trot. And just because trot, that was kind trot. of wild. And we'll let that settle and, and then we'll trot. ask him again. <laughs> and trot. And trot. And trot. That's what we did the other day. Uh, that's trot. good. They're kind of like some of them are a bit like and puke comes out that way every day. She's very sleepy, and all of a sudden she wakes up. Yeah. Well, it's starting to rain pretty hard here, too. Oh, is it? Uh, yeah. Guess we're supposed to get some of that this weekend ourselves. Looking forward to that. Keep that going. Now ask him to canter again. It's getting pretty loud here. Oh, okay. Come on. Trot. You can go ahead and ask him to canter. Trot. Good 
filter out there. Keep it going. Go ahead and ask him to canter up. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Canter. Better. Keep that going. Keep him out there. Gets over that. <laughs> Got a cat joining me here. Keep that going. That's much better. Now back to a trot. And trot. Good boy. Uh, good. Nice into that stretch now. Very good. Keep that. Keep that. Good boy. Trot. Come on. Trot. Nice. Now go and let him come back to the walk. And walk. And let him halt. I want you to take the side reins up about five holes. Let's see if we can stabilize him up a little bit. Okay, so you said five holes? Yeah, about five holes. Yeah, okay. Five will do. See what happens when we do that. Boy, Duke. Did a good job there, buddy. Okay, walk on. Walk on. Walk on. Walk on. Good. Keep that. Hey. <laughs> trot. Feeling good all of a sudden. Trot. Hey, go ahead and come back to the trot, trot. again. Yeah, he's been, doing down right. bit, he's been doing a little of this, trying to challenge me on this side. All right. The lunge line. Trot. Let's Plus stabilize the rain. Yep. Let's keep it going for a minute until he stretches back into it. There you go. Good job. That. That's more like it. Chop. <laughs> trot. And uh -huh. trot. Trot. You guys getting some big rain downpours there? What's that now? Is he? Is it raining there really hard? That's yeah, really, react. really hard. Yeah, that's what he's reacting to. A little bit sound. Keep that. It's really good. Got some good energy in it. Use it while we have it. A little bit. Yep, it's really good. We'll take advantage of this energy. Keep that going, just like that. Trap. Now go and let him let him halt on the center line again and change directions. And walk. 
and who. Good boy, Duke. Good fellow. Good boy. Come on, walk on. Okay, move out. Move out. Move out. Move out. <clears throat> Move out. Go ahead and try this, right? Just move him out actively. Got to move those hind quarters out a little bit. Come on, move out. Keep it going. There we go, like that. Keep it. Good. Keep that going. Good. A little more active. You'll notice how you start to see that underside of his neck. You'll yeah. notice how the back sort of drops when you see that. Hind quarters back out again. Come on. Trap. A little more active. Move out. There we go. That's more like it. Now ask him to canter again. Canter. 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 Good. Good. There, there. Now back to a trot. And trot. Good. Let him halt on the center line. And walk. And walk. And hoo. Now go ahead and shorten the side range another five holes. We'll go a little bit more and see what happens. Hang on a second, Will. I can't hear you. OK. Let me, let me get under a speaker. We're going to shorten the side range five holes more. Come here. Shorten the side range. Can you hear me now? OK. Shorten, shorten the side range five more holes. Yeah, it's five more holes, please. Okay. <laughs> Let's see how he handles it. And so when you're doing these kinds of things at home with your horses, folks, I mean, the thing is, you know, we try things. If it does, if we, if now if we shorten them up and we find that he can't sustain over his back, then we're going to let him back out again. But uh, we try and see what's possible. But if we don't succeed, we don't try to beat up the horse to make it happen. We just realize he's not quite ready to do it and just go back again. Letting him stretch back deeper again. So nothing is ever really, if you think about it, a failure in the sense that you just kind of see, it's always trying to figure out what is the, what horse capable of doing today. So this is what we're kind of doing is seeing what he's capable of doing and what happens when we do this. If his back is strong enough, he'll just stay up and uh, will be able to engage and 
he won't resist the bridle and just kind of stretch back into it at a higher position of his head and neck. If he struggles, then we know he's not quite ready to be there yet. And of course, as you can all see with the side reins connected hey, Will, to the just side. So you no, know, I can't hear you at all. It's okay, like raining I'm back. so hard. So just give me okay. one minute. I, I was kind of talking. I was talking. You hear me now at all? Maybe I, if I turn up, I don't know if it turns me up. Let me see. Does that make me louder? I don't know. Hello, can you hear me now? <laughs> can you hear me? At all? No, nope, it must be poor in there. Can't hear you yet. Okay, we'll give it a second. I'll keep talking. <laughs> can you hear me enough to start lunging again? It's, it's like an old Verizon commercial. Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay, <laughs> go ahead and lunge with this all with right. this a little bit. Let's see what happens. Not in Pennsylvania. We're up there. Uh, it's like it's passing. We're looking at Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, we're almost through it. I don't know if we are. Okay, let me get going. Okay. All right. Well, let's get through this. Yep. Okay. Come on. Walk on. You can do it, buddy. You're being a good uh, boy. Come on. Maybe. Okay, I'll move out. Come on, move out, move out. Go ahead and step away from him so that you can run your lash out. Yep. And touch him. Come on, walk. He wants walk to be out. in your lap. <laughs> move on. Come on. There you go. And go ahead and start him into the trot whenever you're ready there. Trap. There we go. So much nicer when it's not raining so hard. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's the way. Just keep trying to move those hind quarters a little bit outside and see if he's able to stretch into it at this level. Trap. There we go, like that, good. Just keep trying to yield the hindquarters a little more. He's got his shoulders outside, so see if you can keep him in a little bit in front and move the hindquarters to the outside. There, that's getting there now. Moments again. Drop. Getting better there. Keep going for another moment. There we go. Drop. There we go. Keep it going. Now go ahead and let him walk. And walk. And halt. Now, I just want you to take the side reins completely off, and I just want to stretch him all the way down now for a second without anything on him. Okay. That was good. And what we saw there is he's not ready to quite be up this high yet, though he did come around there a couple of strides. But I just wanted to see where he was at with this. So I don't want you to take him up this high on your own yet. I just yeah. wanted to see what would happen so I can advise you. So that would be too short for him at the moment. So we're just going to take him off completely, and now just let him stretch all the way down for a moment to get him active. Hey, Darcy, can you come get these side reins? You can just snap them on, snap them together, or snap them to the saddle. I got them half off now. Okay. <laughs> I just need you to grab these. 
Come get them from me. There you go. So one more little moment here, just letting him stretch all the way out. Yep. Okay, Duke. Come. Walk out. Move out. Come on. <coughs> You've been hanging around with Trigger too much. <laughs> Come on. There you go ahead and trot whenever you're ready there. Trot. Come on. Trot. He's going to sleep on us. There we go. Trap. And once again, just yielding his hindquarters, a little more like an active. Tap. Trap. There we go. Good. Keep that. Trap. That's what I wanted. Good. Keep that. Good. Trap. There. Hey, let him walk. And walk. I just wanted to come back, just what we did there, and just stretch him all the way out. Okay, we're ready for you to get on. See what kind of horse we have left here. Got a lazy horse? <laughs> we'll see. Come on, buddy. Come on. Well, he wasn't lazy when he was leaping around out there a little while ago. Yeah, the rain was coming on. <laughs> he's pretty excited there. He may have worn himself out. So talking about this is the kind of thing that, you know, you can't just instantly make this. The horse, you know, the impulsion energy that can keep refresh, refreshing itself and keep you going uh, it takes a while. Yeah, I've been seeing, you know, improvement, you know, every couple of days, you know, we've been yeah. doing that thing where I've been just working him in hand and trying to activate him more yeah. that way. And it seems to be, seems to be helping. Little by little, it all helps. And it's, a lot better than it was, you know, from the first lesson. You know, the first day I got him and I took that, you know, we did the lesson. Yeah, with him. exactly. It's like night and day difference. Yeah, I've had him, I think this is, it'll be, the end of the month will be two months. So I think he's doing two pretty good for two months. Yeah, doing very good. I think so too. Yes, I know at the clinic there were a lot of, a lot of jealous folks at how quick he, were, he was doing all this stuff. Yeah. Uh, good. He Not showed jealous, off. Really, but, you know, yeah, it went off. Well, it just, once again, it just shows you how far you can come with, you know, when horses are damaged before you start, you know, once again, we have to get to zero before we can start training them. So when you're starting with horses that are, yep. you know, overflexed in the neck, hollow in the back, have been that way for years, you know, driver, you neck, all this kind of stuff, you can change all of that, but it takes time.
Come here, bud. Come on. Come on. I'll walk a little bit, mister. I'm going to pull this mounting block all of this so we don't <coughs> run over all my gear. Come here. Come on. Come on. Ooh. Good boy, Duke. Oops. All right, if you're all set, then always take a moment when we first get in the saddle to stretch yourself up. Think about your own position before we can start thinking about his. Where you're at in the saddle, everything feel good. And then just going large in the walk. Once we get that to happen. Come on. Come on. If you'll stretch out like that, good. But yet be active at the same time is what we're looking for. Hey, Darcy, can you hear me? Can you turn up the master volume a little bit? <clears throat> She's leaving. Darcy? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Just, just, keep trying to, Come on. Yeah. just keep trying to open up that walk. So all you're trying to do is just make that walk a little more active. So you start stepping in some kind of regularity. At the same time, think about stretching yourself up and keeping yourself light. One of the hard things when horses are kind of sticky is we tend to want to hunker down into the saddle, try to make them go, but that actually slows them down more than anything else. So the more you stretch up and lighten yourself in the saddle and just keep asking for those active steps so it starts to just open up the walk. <clears throat> Getting better and just keep trying to keep going with that till we get it to where we want it to be. It starts to have a real walk. Come on. Walk on. Come on. Walk. You know, just keep trying to generate a little bigger step. <clears throat> and of course, at this phase, we can't expect to control the frame if we have no energy moving through the horse. So that's why this is all about that, getting the horse to the stage where we can maintain some kind of level of impulsion. So we have something to ride rather than just sort of the the lifeless body of the horse, if you will. So it's all about getting that impulsion. We can't start to try to correct anything until there's just something to correct, until there's some movement moving through the horse enough, active enough that we can begin to do that. So at this stage, that's all we can do is just keep asking for a bigger step so we get some kind of swing going, because we couldn't ask for a frame because there's nothing there to ask a frame from. There's not enough movement. So just knowing that, you don't frustrate yourself with the idea of you always have to think, what is the horse today? What is this horse capable of doing today? And each day at this level with him is just trying to get this activated a little more and a little more until we get that point like where Calvin is just now starting to get to, where, he, where after a good warm-up, he can maintain some level of impulsion. It's getting better and just keep trying to do that. There you go. We start at least want to stretch into it. If he's trying to itch a little bit, but he's slowing down a little too much. Just keep trying to open that up. Come on. And of course, this is why we, we uh, started with lunging with the source because it's kind of way his walk is. So it's a little hard to try to do him to work in hand because he's just got that lazy kind of inactive step yet. 
That's getting better. Welcome. Welcome. Go ahead and turn after the center line and see if you can do some kind of a little bit of a leg yield to the right. See if that helps. Good boy. Can't hear you, Will. It's raining really hard. It's pouring again. Okay, keep going. Just keep trying to get the step active. I don't know if you heard that or not, but that's what you're looking for here. Come on. A little better, keep it going like there you go. Get a little bit of stretch. Okay. Can you hear me now? Are you starting to be able to hear me yet? Can you hear me? Can you hear me, can you hear me now? Still can't hear me. Can you can you hear me? <laughs> Try to stop under a speaker where you can hear me for a second. Come on. Can you hear me now? Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I guess it's raining really hard there. Come on. Good boy. <laughs> there you go. Good boy. That's it. Drunk a little better. Work on. Can you hear me now? Come on. It's getting a little better. I don't think he can still hear me. Can you hear me, Ron? Nope. <laughs> That's good. That's getting a little better now. At least we can see he's starting to get the horse to at least get into a stretch. The hind legs are getting a little more active. Can you hear me, Ron? Who can hear me? Still Don't can't you hear you, Will. It's raining okay. really, really hard. Can you keep going? Come on. Just keep doing what you're doing. Come on. Walk on. Okay, walk. Ron, can you get under get under a speaker where you can hear me? Can you Still hear me? Can't hear um, you. Come you on. can't hear me? Walk on. <laughs> Can you hear me now? It's funny because we don't really hear the rain, but obviously it's loud in there. Come on. Walk is okay. getting better. Come on. Walk. Okay, it's getting better. That's a good go. That's it. Keep going. <laughs> good. Just getting a little freer. So you can all understand with a horse like this at its level, you see, we couldn't ask for the frame. All we can ask for is that activity. We couldn't begin to manipulate that because there's not enough energy in the horse to be able to sustain it. Come on. So knowing what is capable, what's possible, and what's not is so important as a trainer so that you don't frustrate yourself on the horse by trying to do things that would be impossible. Come on. Walk on. All right, Will, sorry to go rogue on you. I couldn't hear you, so I just... That's okay, I understand. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay, stop. <laughs> what I want you to do is just get off, and I want you to just lead him in hand with the... 
we're gonna, it's kind of like a, what I call my adapted way of doing work in hand. You're just going to like you're leading him, but the whip is going to be in your outside hand. So we're just going to activate his walk. So I want you okay. to dismount. So I want to finish with just getting a nice active walk out of him with you walking along with him. Hey, Darcy, can you hold him for one minute? I want to turn up the sound system. Thank you. I want to turn up the sound system so I can hear You look all bundled all right, up, Darcy. Ahead. Can you hear me now? Keep can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you better. Can you hear me now? Okay. So what I want you to do is, is uh, take the lunge whip in your hand. Instead of, instead of the regular whip, take the lunge whip. Take the lunge whip. Take yep. the lunge whip. Take the lunge and whip. You, and you're going to hold it backwards in your hand. So like you're going to lead him like with the reins in two hands, right? Just like you normally lead. But the lunge whip is in your outside hand so that you can reach back and tap him. And we're just going to get a good active walk going out of him. Okay? So you do the same thing like a normal working hand, except use a lunge whip instead of the short prop. Yes, but you're just going to hold the reins like you normally would to lead the horse. You're not going to put them over his head like we normally do for working hand. You're just going to be walking alongside him. You're just leading him, it. making him active. That's right. With the whip so that you can reach behind you and really get him active in the whip. I've lost you in the picture here for some reason or another. Yeah, I'm going to work him in hand without the going over the head. There you go. So it's really just like leading. It's called sort of basic work in hand, you might call it. But it's mainly just being able to activate him and get a good active walk to be able to stop with that. Sorry, it's being such a hard day. It's okay. Nope. There you go. And you kind of want to have that uh, so you, the lash, you have it all wrapped up so the lash isn't trailing behind you anywhere. So you can reach back with your, with your hand and tap him with the speaker. Okay. All right. Just how you have it now and just make him active around the ring. So reach back with your whip even now. Reach back behind you. Reach the whip behind you and tap him with the whip. Reach Got back it. with the whip yep. behind your back like yep. that. Yep. No, but, you keep, but keep the whip in your left hand. It should be in your outside hand, your left uh, hand. Yeah, that's what I was going to So you reach like behind this. like that, like yeah. that. Then you just tap him. There you go. That's what I want to see. And I okay. really want to see you make him walk out. Come on. That's the whole thing here is just walk. activate him until he does. Walk. Do you want me to go large? Yeah, go large. Just, yes, it. I want a big walk. Biggest walk you can get out of it. Walk on. Walk on. Got to walk, dude. Come on, a little harder. Tap him a little harder. Walk. Got to walk. <laughs> Come on. There you go. Now we're getting there even more. You should be having trouble to keep up with him. Come on. More active. It's not enough. More active. That's a good boy. Come on. There you go. Tap him again. Come on. Getting better. Even more. Come on. You should be having to take big, long strides to keep up with him. Tap again. Come on. Walk. Now, be sure when you tap that you get a response because he's just kind of doing nothing. So reach back there and tap him a little harder if you didn't get a response. That's walk. getting better. There we go. Now we're starting to get something like a walk. Keep it going down the long side. Walk on. That's it. If he trots a little bit, no big deal. Just bring him back to a walk. That's how he understands. No, I don't want to trot. I want a big walk. Okay. There you go. Like that. Keep that going. There's what I want. So it's nice and active and free. Like that. Keep that going around the ring. All the way. Don't let it slow down. Come on. There you go. Like that. Come on. So the good news is horses don't know whether you're on them or not, you know, so we, we can teach them a lot from the ground before we get on them. And when we, we get on them, if we find, like with him, it's just too much of a struggle for him to get going. Even though this looks like a nice, big, fleshy horse, you know, we still have to always understand that our weight does a lot to affect them. You know, if they can't get going, we get off and we get them right without us on there. And then, fortunately, we put the weight back on. That's looking much better. Keep that. That's more like a walk instead of, like, being dragged to his death. <laughs> Keep that. Even try to open it up down this long side, even a little more. A little more. 
Okay. So, okay, Harry, because it's raining really hard. I'll stop under okay. the speakers. It's good now. It's coming good now. Keep that walk going. Keep it going. Okay. And move. Keep it going. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? I can hear you can now. You hear me? I'm under okay. the speaker. All right. So, okay. Stay right there. So that's really good. You're almost there. I just wanted a little bit bigger. So go back and don't be afraid. And when you start finally actually tapping him enough, so always remember if you tap, did the horse respond or did it just flinch? He was kind of flinching, but he wasn't really doing anything. So be sure that the horse actually goes more actively forward, not just kind of reacts to the whip and does nothing, right? So be sure they actually step more actively forward. So one more time, the same thing you just did and try to make it a little more active. Give me a little bigger step. We were almost there. Same direction. Same direction. Just keep going yeah. the same way. Come on. Good job. There we go. Like that. Now, like that. That's what I'm looking for. Like that. Good job. There. That's good. Like that. Come on. Good. There we go. Now, can you hear me now? Yep. Can you hear me now? Okay, you can stop there. <laughs> That was good. Good boy. <laughs> That's all I had to do. Good job. Now, it might be, this is a, well, it's called sort of basic work in hand, if you will. But this is the kind of thing that's very good for him. We must end every day. And as you saw with him, for folks watching this, you know, once again, we try things. But when they don't work, we keep backing up and find something that does work that's less effort for the horse. So if we get on the horse, and like with this one, he was just slowing down to a crawl. His hind legs were barely moving. It's just pointless. So you just get off him. Once again, it's just he will, we want him to go away tonight with the idea. He didn't come out of here until he got active and got a good walk, right? Yeah. So if you have to – there's nothing wrong with getting off a horse and working it from the ground. You know, it never should be a, a, pen, a thing in your mind about it. You know, if you can't get them to go, then get off and do it this way. Because we don't, we don't want to beat him up and get him half crazy to do it. So that's not what we want either. You know, so, it, you know, he just looks like he struggles. So it's just a matter of understanding that, you know, he just is, while he's a nice big piece of flesh of a horse, he still doesn't have that much strength. If he did, he'd have no trouble carrying around actively, right? So that's what we always have to remember. Just because a horse is big or whatever it is, doesn't mean they can necessarily do everything we want them to do every day. Does that make sense? So... This is a good way, maybe uh, try starting out for a few days. See if you can do this kind of work in hand before you lunge him, just out of curiosity, you know, and, uh, and then get on him, see how you go. But anytime you get that kind of walk, no, that's what we need. Just get off and work him in hand, just like you did here, so that every day he goes away with that big, free, open walk. And pretty soon he'll do that with you up there as well. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, every day is a new day with him, and that's, it's, it's been awesome. So no complaints. And that's what it is with all of them. And that's what makes, once again, what makes this interesting. If they were the same every day, well, A, everyone would be able to do this because it would be very simple. It is simple, but the hard part of it is reading the horse. The horse is, is the, the unknown factor here. Like we, we know the system works, but where is the horse in the system and what do we have to do to get him ready to do that? As I said, there's no point in trying to put a horse in a frame that has no energy. Impulsion is what allows you to get the horse to hold itself up. That is energy that we can control in direct into movements. That's what, that's what it's all about. So we're not kicking and pounding with every stride, trying to get the horse to do something, you know, that which is always counterproductive and frustrating for all. Any questions today? Nope. I got some stuff to work on. Uh, we're going to try to do a lesson on Thursday. Darcy is traveling next week, depending on okay. my schedule, but I'll let you know. Okay, um, just right now I'm ahead. planning on it, so if something yeah, okay. changes, I'll let you know. But sounds thank good. You for all right, this. you guys. Also, all, all these videos that we've been doing, we put it on uh, the Art to Ride YouTube channel, so check them out. We've got all, yes. all 41 of them, and I'll post this one later tonight. You can so, start at the very beginning and watch them all and see how far we've all come, and it's it'll be awesome. fun to watch them as time goes on. Because most people, the biggest problem is they've never seen anybody go through all these steps, you know, and trying – 
trying, you guys are trying to be horse trainers and you're trying to learn yourself how to ride at the same time. So that's why it's so important that all these steps are so critical that we don't overstep anything or overwork it or end up, you know, with a lot of problems. So we, we have to take both of you into consideration as we move forward. Yep. So, and we stuff. appreciate it. Thank you, Will. You All right. I appreciate it. Great job today. I look forward to seeing you guys hopefully next week, and we'll see. I'll talk to you soon. Sounds Thanks, good. everybody. Have a good morning. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Come on, Duke.